Hello, this is Victor. I'm here with a new product review, a new Warhammer and the Walls product. So, yeah, it's a game that I'm really enjoying and I like to collect. And here we have uh, the review of the Warhammer and the Walls Direcasm Arena Mortis. Okay, so first of all, this is an expansion. Okay, and you need the um, starter set of Darkasm to be able to play this game. You don't have the complete rules here, so uh, you need the, the this is just an expansion of the game. That I think, uh, I would say in the future, it's better if they do it as a complete game. So, or you need the starter set, or you need the exp the other one that they did, they, they release in the middle of the... So you need a, a rule book, okay? A full rule book to be able to play this game. Okay, um, what we have inside of this, so I'm going to share you... So we have the rule book, I will go through the details on, on, how the, on the rule book and what is contained here, so we we'll have the rules to play arena. Uh, we will have uh, the tokens needed to play it. We have one board, double-sided, okay? That can be used in the normal games, so it's not only for arena, can be used in the normal games. And then we have two sets of cards. We have what is called the event cards, okay? These are uh, 20 cards. And then we have 20 plots and 20 um, upgrades. I will make a look. Uh, we have the initiative cards, okay? And we have two new characters that are only for arena, and they don't have meters, so you have to have the uh, the meters uh, uh, apart. So you have to buy the meters apart. So they, these two they don't come the meters. I think this is also another miss. That I, if you want to put uh, some additional characters just for arena, why not to put? Uh, these are really uh, push feed miniatures being on the market for quite long. So this was a good addition for that. So, what is Arena about? Arena is about one character combat, okay? So it's a different rule set where you just take, let me take from here, I don't have it painted, sorry, but I'm just taking, so you can take, for example, this guy, and you only play with one guy, okay? You only play with one miniature. Each player has one miniature. The game is designed for three to six players, Okay, you have it here, and the duration of the game will depend on the tones, will depend on how many players are on the game. Okay, so it's, it's a game design, and, and it represents that this uh, each player have one of these heroes, and they fight in an arena. Okay, in arena, uh, uh, just to get, and then the, the one with more glory points is the winner. Okay, so the there are rules. So depending if the hero have more or less wounds, you will have more or less upgrades, so there are rules to compensate a little bit that all the heroes have the same chances, and the deck building is completely different. So let's go first with the deck building. So in that case, the deck building for uh, Arena will not have objectives, so you don't score glory points with objectives, you only have um, 10 plots and 10 upgrades. So you have to take up to 10 upgrades, so you can be more than 10 upgrades, the minimum is 10. And then you have to match with the same number of power, of um, plot cards, I think, uh, gambit cards, so I was confused. So the same number of gambit cards that can be um, as well um, um, magic cards, okay? You can make as well, um, I, never, I don't find the word now, but you understand what I mean, eh? you can have sorcerer cards. So you can have that. Neither of the of the can include more than one card with the same name as normal in in, in and you can only include cards that have the same warband symbol as your fighter or they are universal cards. All the cards that come here are universal. Okay. Uh, there are some forsaken cards. Okay. So you cannot use infinite riches from Nightbolt, Quick Thinker from Shakespeare, Time Trap from Shakespeare. Aggressive Defense from Nightbolt or Quickening Graves from Power and Bone. What that means? It seems that all the seasons are open for this one, so there is not, I, I need to check, but I, I, yeah, um, in principle all the other seasons open. They are not restricted cars. Okay, as I said, it's a completely different concept. The setup, so first of all, the, the game lines will depend on how many players. Okay, so we are going to, let me take, 
and, and, and we'll go from from six rounds if there are six players to three rounds if there are, to nine rounds sorry if there are three players as you can see there is not option for two players so this is designed for um, three or, or three to six players okay so it's important to know that and yeah then the initiative is roll every every phase okay and you roll you take well it's not roll it's take you use these cards to have the initiative so if you have two one player uh, three players you take three if you have four players four okay and you take up to six um cards okay you um yeah you you mix them you shuffle them and then you put them upside down each player takes a card and you go in the order of these cards in each um round okay and as i said there will be uh, six, seven, eight, or nine rounds, depending on the number of players. Um, this is quite okay. Then the first player starts. Uh, then we also, when you the setup of the board is going to be just one board for all the players, so there is not a second board, and you need to place one of these tokens, okay, upside down in the middle, as close as possible to the middle, so it can be here or here. Okay, uh, these are the two ones in the middle. So, and then once you start, you turn, and each of these cards, okay, uh, you have only one objective, and each of these objectives will give you glory points, okay, and some abilities. So, if you are at the top of this objective at the end of the battle, at the end of the round, because then here you have all of them give one glory point. And on top they give some additional abilities that you can gain okay so this is one way of getting um glory points um yeah once you have placed the, the token in the middle then you you decide the initiative order uh, and then you start you also have to you place upgrades to your player so if you are so normally when you are playing you will have two decks one deck with the gambit cards okay and one deck with the upgrade cards. So at the beginning of the game, if you have only one or two wounds, you place three upgrades to your player. If you have um, three to four, you play two upgrades. If you have five wounds, you place one upgrade. And if you have six or more wounds, you don't have upgrades to start. Okay, you can have upgrades later on, but not to start. And it goes in the initiative order. Uh, okay, and um, so you have to place your character. All the different players will place their own character on one of these uh, starting points. So you can be very aggressive and be in the middle, but you know that you will receive more attacks. Or you can be more conservative and being one of the edges. So you have this one of cards, and I want to share again, and this one. Okay? This one is quite risky because normally you will put here the objective that is next to uh, one of these um, X. Um, um, Examples, okay. So then we go to the action phase. The action phase will have um, f uh, six steps. So the first is to reveal the initiative card to know who goes first. The second is to raise the fighter. So you activate your fighter, and when you raise your fighter, you um, yeah you you also do first. So when you activate your fighters, you also raise one of these. This is going to be a deck that is going to be used f since are different events. They cause negative impact on your on the heroes from, I don't know, from uh, plus one damage. Well, some are positive and some are negative. Right? Plus one damage uh, to range one or two attack actions to, um, I don't know, uh, fighters cannot have wounds characteristic of five or higher. If a fighter wounds characteristic... Uh, will be fire 5 or higher, that fighter wound statistic is 4. Okay, so you are, all the fighters have reduced the wound statistic to 4. In the, quite curious. So you can see that some are more negative, some are, are really... Uh, in set order, each player deals 1 damage to the fighter. If they do, that player draws 2 gambits. Okay? You can deal 1 damage uh, in exchange of 2 gambits. So, yeah, each of one of these have a different... Uh, type of uh, events, okay. So 
when you start the, the room, so you, you first, uh, so you have this event that will give some sauce, and then you will raise your fighter. Raise your fighter means that if your fighter was killed, you can put it back on the battlefield, and then you move as normal. So the movement is quite normal. What is the difference is that the power cards are played at the beginning, and so the gambit cards are played at the beginning and at the end, and the upgrades are just played. If I'm not wrong. Uh, after raising the um, uh, after raising the uh, the fighter, okay. So yeah, uh, it's it's a quite a completely different mechanics, and then you gain glory points for killing your opponents, or you gain um, uh, glory points uh, for being on the objective in the middle. Of course, a part of that they also include other ways of other ways to play like team games. Or tactic um, games, um, tactic elimination games. So you have here. The, the the thing here is is just um, a rule set, an expansion to play with one character and uh, a different rules. And then we have here new plots and new upgrades that can be used in all 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 the games. Right? Can be used in in match play of normal. Uh, Warhammer Underworlds games and this will be activated at least for this end of the season so they will be mainly for the next season, right? So uh, we have um, some that are quite good. It's quite I don't I have not seen anyone that is really saying it's a mass include here um, But I don't think they are um, too bad. So we have for example this one Reveal two power cards in your hand to your opponent then pick your one opponent and uh, up to two random power cards in their hand that opening must reveal these cards. Okay, so it's just you show your cards and you show this is good if you know that you are going to play the card, right? So you show these two cards and then you force the opponent to show the card he has. So you, then you can know if you want to play or not, if you 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 expecting some reactions depending on what you do. I don't know, I'm not fan of this type of cards. Reaction. There is a lot of about reactions here. So play this after enemy fighters attack action that takes a friendly fighter with a lower wound characteristic than the attack attacker. So you gain one glory spain. So they will see that there will be a lot of that interacts as well with glory spains. So we will have different ones. So this is as well play during enemy fighter attack that deal damage step. Is that attack deal no damage to friendly fighter to take the fighter out of action? Roll one magic dice. And uh, each enemy fighter adjacent to that fighter uh, on a roll of um, yeah of the storm deal one damage. So it's a way you explode, right? Similar to what the undead do, but uh, I think it's worse. This one is what is curious, but I don't think I will use it. So pick an opponent and a number between one or three. So your opponent gains one to three glory points. After your opponent gains those glory points, you draw. Up to X power cards or heal X. Okay. I don't know. I'm not. Um, I don't like giving. I, I think it's are very situational. I can with the spell. This is very difficult. You need two storms. Uh, if it casts plus one dice plus one damage to range one or two, uh, this effect. So this is quite a good one. Okay. But it's for to put it on your um, sorcerers. Um, then there are some that is this is plus one dice to attack actions that target an enemy fighter with one characteristic of five or higher. This persists until a fighter with um, a wound characteristic of five or higher is taken out of action. This is not bad, okay, but as well situational. Not all, not not too many warbands have this amount of wounds. Okay, so you will have uh, and you will have different cards that uh, okay. That I don't know. There were some that there is a lot of things then that have the combo thing or, or they play with the combo attacks and then they have for example there was this one for example play this after a gambit or attack that takes one or more friendly fighters out of action you know you see there's a lot that uh, and I think it's mainly for arena right because in arena you are killed and you come back. You are killed and you come back. So you come back at the beginning of uh, of all your activations. So in case you are killed, so of course it's it's time you are killed. You give glory points. Um, yeah. So this one 
choose a friendly fighter that is holding an objective, deal one damage to the chosen um, fighter and give that fighter one guard token and one charge token. Okay, so this guy cannot do anything else this turn. Plus one dice and plus one damage on that fighter range one or two. This effect persists until the chosen. It, so you you lose one turn and it changes to give plus one. So this can, this is quite good. Okay, this is not bad for some decks. So plus one. So you give. Plus, so imagine that you have a tag with your character. You are this is mainly on. I'm thinking mainly on a normal game. Okay, you have done all your actions with your character. Then at the end, you put you deal one damage to your own character, but you put him on guard. You don't care to add a charge token because this guy most likely have done a charge token, a charge already. And then you give plus one dice and plus one damage to this fighter for the rest of the battle. Right? It's not bad. Okay, the final gambit again. This is quite curious. This is very, very, very risky as well. Okay, and this is why it's called the final gambit. You choose, you choose a friendly fighter, you roll three and attack dice. And if you roll one or more crits, okay, choose them and, and the, the chosen fighter makes a charge action. If you don't roll any crit, the chosen fighter is taken out of action. So this is quite situational, but maybe you want to take the risk. So they are quite interesting cars here. Not I have not seen anything apart of this one that gives plus one plus one. But uh, yeah, but all of them you have to be careful. Okay, so they have or they are not super strong or they have some important drawbacks. Okay, so I will not go. So you have and then we have as well the. The upgrades, and again, we have here some powerful upgrades, but they have as well some important drawbacks. And this was the first one that was. So, this is another card that gives you plus one dice, plus one damage to range attack, only range of one attack. Okay? But um, that this fighter has not defense anymore. Okay? So, the defense value is zero for this fighter for the rest of the battle or, or until yeah, as he has this upgrade. So, it's, a, it's making him very aggressive. This one, for example, gives plus one wound and plus one move. Uh, and when this fighter uh, makes a move action, this fighter can move through block or occupied hexagons. Okay. And this fight, well, okay. But after this upgrade is given to the fighter, this card one glory point. So for one glory point, this is not bad, right? You discard one of your glory points, but you win plus one wound, plus one move. And you can move, uh, and you have ethereal. So it's yeah, it's it have a cost, okay? It's it's more expensive, and it's a thing is a spend only spend. This card one glory point, so it can be spent or only spent. This one is not bad. One two one uh, is a combo and cliff, okay? And this can be uh, um, improved. And you have the dying curse, so another game, another one that if you die, you do actions to your opponent. This one is curious, plus two wounds, but then during attack actions, the target of these fighters keep attack, so you don't have defense anymore. Okay, so again, a lot of upgrades, and a lot of them have some drawbacks, some are interesting. And, and then the, the, there is a new series of objects here, I just wanted to, to, to close up that are the seal of powers, okay? And we have um, one, two, three, four, five seal of power. So, but they are quite, they have quite important drawbacks. So they are quite powerful, plus two defense. But after an attack action in which you made a defense roll for this fighter that contain one or more crits, deal one damage to this fighter and pick one opponent, that opponent gains a glory point. So you can give a lot of glory points. Yeah, they are quite... They are, but you have plus two defense, so you can imagine a guy can have... Imagine that... Uh, I'm imagining this on on one of his material with two already defenses, so it's making him quite um, difficult. So for example, this gives cliff and a snare. And snare. Uh, but after this fighter is taken out of action, pick one opponent and you... So if he's killed, you give a glory point. So it's it's quite a risky 
they are quite risky. Okay, reaction after an upgrade, this fighter is discarded, give this fighter another upgrade, then discard this card. So, if you discard, so this is a way to avoid to discard a card that you like it. So, you give a second chance to really powerful upgrades that you would like to, to keep it. Okay, and this one, uh, this upgrade has the following cumulative effects. So, you have one seal of power. You have plus one wound. If you have I have two seals of power, you have two plus one wound. If you have three plus one move and plus one wound, of course, it's cumulative. And on, on four seals, you, you pick uh, one opponent, take one of that opponent glory points, and then discard this card. Okay, and this is interesting because then you can do discard this one instead of discarding this one. Okay, and the last seal. In reaction during this fight, a range 1 or 2, attack after the drive back, deal 1 damage to the target and give this fighter a charge token. If you do so, if you do, pick one opponent, that opponent gains 1 glory point. So, I said, they are quite powerful, but they give um, glory points. So, there is more and more of this type of cards that you are giving, uh, you have um, benefits and drawbacks at the same. So you have to think twice when you want to use them. I like more the ones that you don't have this type of double edge type of cards, but okay, they are some quite powerful. So that's all. That's all what I want to share here. So this is the Diarchasm Arena Mortis. Okay, and um, it's up to you. Um, I think for the cards, I like to collect all these cards, so this is why I'm choosing. I don't think. As far as I know, I have not seen any card that is really a game changer, but I'm not too... I didn't play too much recently on, on, on this, to be fair, with all the COVID and situation. But, yeah, I, I just um, wanted to share with you what you obtain, what you get for um, this, okay? I never play Arena Mortis. I mainly take it for the cards and for the collection. As well, you have a new board that you can use for for regular games. Um, here you don't have any adjacent X. They are not bad boards. I like I like the design as well. Okay you have okay this one. These are quite curious because they have you have well, some yeah they are quite scattered so I don't know it's going to be very useful for for uh, I, I can give a try but I don't think they are super useful for for regular games because sometimes you can like to have two guys together or something like that this X is, is risky but then at the end you block to have bad ones in this area okay okay these are these are really in the in these two are quite in if you want to play aggressively these two are quite good but if you have a big warband you are very scattered right from this guy to this guy so Maybe on the other side, you are a little bit, you, know, you also have a, a big scatter here. So, okay, this is for big war ones. For small ones, maybe it's more interesting. So, this is all what I want to share here. I hope you have liked this review. Please give a like if you have liked it. Let me know what do you think about the Dark Asm Arenas Mortis and what you think about Warhammer Underworlds. And as usual, thanks a lot for watching and see you again later. Bye!